Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over two examples using the kinematic equations to solve for one-dimensional horizontal motion. And in this video, in both examples, we're going to be solving for the displacement, the distance, the change in position, delta x. And this is the first example we're going to go over. It says, starting from rest, an airplane accelerates down runway at 3.2 meters per second squared for 27.5 seconds before it takes off. And we want to know how far does the plane travel when it travels for 27.5 seconds with an acceleration of 3.25 meters per second squared. Now, the first thing you should always do when you're solving these problems using the four kinematic equations using the kinematic equations, always write down the five variables that are included in the kinematic equations. And those five variables are, write down all five, the initial velocity, the final velocity, delta x, the change in position, the distance, the acceleration, and the time. Simply write down all five of those and then fill in what you know and what you don't know. Now, do we know the initial velocity? It says the plane starts from rest. That means the initial velocity is zero meters per second. Do we know the final velocity? No, but we do know the acceleration and we do know the time and we're solving for the distance, delta x, as we said, we don't know the final position. The first thing you should do, write down all five. Write down what you know and what you don't know. You will notice you have been given three variables you're solving for the fourth. Get out your kinematic equations. You will notice in each of the kinematic equations, there are four variables. Therefore, if you're given three and you're solving for the fourth, you can use one of these equations. And the next thing I do is I start at the top of my list and I look for the equation. First of all, I look for the equation or look for an equation that has the variable I'm trying to solve for. Well, I'm trying to solve for delta x, so that means the equation has to have delta x in it. So let's see, does the first equation have delta x? Yes, it does. The next thing the equation has to have, or the next thing is we need to know the other three variables in the equation. So we're solving for delta x. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes. Do we know the final velocity? No. If we don't know one of the other variables, one of the other three variables, then we cannot use that equation. So I'm just going to go on to the next one. Now, we're looking for an equation that has delta x. We're trying to solve for delta x. Does this equation have delta x in it? No, so we cannot use that equation. Now, here the third equation, it has delta x. Do we know the other three variables in the equation? Well, let's look. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes. Do we know the time? Yes. Do we know the acceleration? Yes. And do we know the time? Yes, again. So therefore, this is the equation we're going to use. Now you'll notice the fourth equation, let's just check it. This equation also has delta x in it, but it also has the final velocity. And you'll remember, we don't know the final velocity. So the first thing we did was we wrote down all five variables. We filled in what we knew and what we didn't know. And then we chose the correct equation. Now we're just simply gonna bring that equation over to the next slide and fill in the variables, okay? Now, you'll notice this equation also has initial velocity and the initial velocity is zero. So that means the initial velocity time to time is zero. And this equation simplifies now to delta x, the distance which we're solving for is equal to one half a t squared. Simply plug in the values. Delta x is equal to one half the acceleration 3.25, the time 27.5 seconds squared. Square only the 27.5. And you get that the train, the train, the plane travels 1,229 meters when it accelerates at 3.25 meters per second squared for 25, 27.5 seconds. Okay, follow those rules, those steps. Let's go on and do the next example. Once again, let's read the problem. We have a car, it's approaching a stoplight. It's traveling 30 meters per second. The stoplight turns red, steps on the brakes, the car skids. And when it's skidding to a stop, it has an acceleration of minus 7.5 meters per second. It's minus because the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the direction of motion. Basically, it means it's slowing down.
in this case. And we want to know how far does the car travel. Well, the first thing I told you is write down all five variables. Next, fill in what we know and what we don't know. The initial velocity, the car is moving, the initial velocity is 30 meters per second. The final velocity, because it skids to a stop, is zero meters per second. Do we know the distance? No, but we're trying to solve for the distance, but we do know the acceleration. We're trying to solve for the distance, and we're not given the time, and we're not solving the time. Now, we're going to get out our kinematic equations. We're going to find the equation that has delta x in it and has to have the other three variables. This first equation has delta x, but you'll notice it also has the time. We don't know the time, so we cannot use the first equation. The second equation still does not have delta x in it. Once again, the third equation has delta x, but has the time in it. We don't know the time. And now we'll notice the fourth equation it has delta x. We know the final velocity is zero. We know the initial velocity 30. We know the acceleration minus 7.5. And therefore, this is the equation that we're going to use. Now, we're going to go over to the next slide. And you'll notice in this case, we have final velocity squared, initial velocity squared, 2a delta x. The final velocity is zero. So the final velocity squared is also going to be zero. And we're solving for delta x. So now we can solve this equation for delta x. We're going to subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides. And then we're going to divide by 2a. So we have that the change in position, the distance, is minus the initial velocity squared divided by 2 times the acceleration. We're going to plug the values in simply minus 30 meters squared, or yeah, minus 30 meters squared, divided by 2 times the acceleration. And we get that the distance the car travels is simply 60 meters. Okay, I think that's pretty straightforward. If you follow those steps, you can do those problems, no problem. Write down the five variables. Step two, fill in what you know and what you don't know. Step three, get out your kinematic equations. Look for an equation that has what you're solving for and an equation for which you know the other three variables. Plug the values in, get the correct answer with the units. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can do all of the following three things. Click on the thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment. I appreciate when you leave me a comment in the comment section below. And then also, subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.